Welcome to Elliott Woods. This is a really good place to start if you've ever asked yourself, what the heck is a land trust? There are about 30 land trusts in Ontario now, including the Kuchiching Conservancy. Kuchiching is one of the oldest land trusts operating in Ontario today. And the land trust concept is fairly simple. We acquire beautiful natural wild lands and then we take care of them so that people years from now will be able to enjoy the same sort of Ontario outdoors that we enjoy today. Collectively, the holdings of land trusts are starting to rival those of the provincial park system in Ontario. But land trusts aren't run by the government. They're powered by ordinary people who volunteer their time and their resources to make sure that some of this is around for our children, our grandchildren, and their grandchildren. And that's where Don and Heather Elliott come in. Well, mostly we would picnic out in the more open area with some sunshine, or maybe go right out to the edge where there would be some lovely sunny glades. And then after my children grew up, we started bringing the grandsons here. Um, and so they used to love to come here for a picnic as well. Don and Heather bought these woods years ago. They were on a ramble through Oramadani and they spotted the forest and, and Don had to have it. Over the years, they, they logged very carefully, did some selective uh, work. And they used to come here on Sundays and have a picnic and the kids would run through the forest. Over time, it became a, a really sacred place for them. Well, sadly, in 2006, my husband was dying of cancer and he was doing some estate planning and thinking about what would happen with Elliott Woods. We both had a fear of it um, not remaining the way it has always been. Um, could it be a subdivision or something like that? Um, and just out of the blue, one Sunday morning, Don said to me, I think we should donate it to the Kuchichin Conservancy, and then it will be looked after forever and it will not be developed. Working with the Kuchichin Conservancy, the Elliots realized that they could not only preserve the forest, they could realize some real financial benefits in the process. Making this gift was a big help financially and as we settled Don's estate, because the, uh, the property was assessed, of course, um, um, and the environmental importance of the property was assessed and then it was approved as an eco-gift and as an eco-gift it meant we did not have to pay any capital gains tax on the property and of course there had been considerable uh, increase in value over the 40 years that we had owned it. So that was a big help and also we got a charitable tax donation receipt for the full amount of the value of the property. And that, of course, helped very much with income tax. Lou and Judy Propes have made several donations to both the Kuchichin Conservancy and the Nature Conservancy of Canada using a variety of approaches. If you're planning to think of, of a donation to the Kuchichin Conservancy or any other environmental conservancy, it's important to look at it not just from the benefits to the conservancy and the, and the donors or donees, but to yourself, uh, there's, there's a whole lot of tax opportunities that are very attractive and if you do it right. And I think the government, to give them their due, has gone to great lengths to make this easy and to, uh, and to make it attractive. The most obvious one, and I think it's probably the most popular one, is to just take money out of your bank account and pass it over as a donation to the Conservancy. And of course, if you do that, you get a tax credit. Now, if you give land, that's ecologically sensitive to the Conservancy and it's judged by Environment Canada to be ecologically sensitive, you get 100% of the value, praise value of that land when you give it, no matter what your income is. Because everyone's situation is unique, sometimes the full donation of land isn't the right solution. Conservation easement agreements are another way of protecting the land without giving up ownership. The net benefit of doing an easement and it's the reason I chose to do the easement, is that you do still own the property. When it came to protecting a second natural property in the Kawartha region, 
Heather felt that a conservation easement was the best approach. And I found as I talked it over with my family, um, especially my grandchildren had an attachment to the property that I hadn't realized was there. And so it was sort of grandma, you can't give away the disappearing stream. Agreements are negotiated with the landowner and then registered on title. And when the land is sold, the agreement goes with it. I decided in the end that we would keep the land and just donate an easement on it so it can never be developed. There are still more ways for people to make a legacy gift to a land trust. For Gordon Jane Ball, two founding members of the Kuching Conservancy, a planned gift using insurance made the most sense. Uh, the one that Jane and I chose was uh, to buy a life insurance policy over five years. And what we are doing is to make um, a premium payment every year that's affordable for us over five years. Uh, and that has purchased uh, a life insurance policy so that after Jane and I die, we know that a, a chunk of money well beyond what is the total of our, of our contributions will be paid out to the conservancy. And um, so what that is, is uh, leaving a legacy uh, behind that we're uh, confident will go towards sustaining natural spaces in our area forever. So what is it that moves people like Don and Heather or Lou and Judy or the Balls to make such serious contributions to the Kuchichin Conservancy and other land trusts? The only sure way of protecting a natural space is to own it. Uh, relying on government to protect it is, is, can be certainly cheaper, but it's not reliable. Um, governments are governed by politics and politics are governed by public opinion. I guess what concerns me most about the natural world of Ontario is the loss of habitat for the, for the birds and, and animals. There are threats and the reason that I'd like to preserve it or protect it is now's the time to do that. It's not going to be when the threats arrive because by that time it's going to get very expensive. Um, the time to do it is before they arrive. Building relationships with land trusts surrounding and building cor natural corridors and I can see us having a huge influence on uh, the future of landscapes in, in this area. So if you have a park, they can still put a quarry in it if they want to. And uh, it doesn't, it isn't a final solution. If you own it, you got control. And, or you own it through a reliable organization like the Kuchitin Conservancy or other land trusts. So you know that it's, it's secured. For Don Elliott, the protection of this woods became a defining legacy. We knew that there was going to be a little ceremony to unveil the sign, and Don was determined to be there. He was then in palliative care, but we were able to bring him to the unveiling, and he was thrilled to be here. Um, unfortunately, he actually died three days later, but it was a, one of the satisfactions of his life that he was able to, to do this. It's been six years since the day this sign was unveiled. People who never met Don Elliott and, and Heather walk in this forest now for pleasure. The trees are a little bit bigger and they'll continue to grow until this forest is a, a cathedral of old growth. Years from now, Don and Heather's legacy will still be giving. It's a legacy that's going to keep on giving. And that is what the Kuchin Conservancy is all about.